Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. So I'm here with Yves Delaunay. Did I say it right? Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. Now, he is with the Executive Vice President of Americas of Chateau Angelus. Exactly. And you do pronounce the S, correct? Angelus. Yes, yes, I've had some people say, oh, you're doing Angelou. I'm like, no, I'm not interviewing a poet, um, which would be kind of cool. Um, but I was like, no, I appreciate you pronounce the S, but I'm not the best at non-English languages. But usually I, I, I'm I, usually good with most of it. But yes, yeah, so Angelus. Um, so <laughs> this is a fantastic chateau in San Emilion. I happen to have unfortunately not able to visit in 2011 when I went to Bordeaux. I did go to uh, Fon Roque and uh, with Elaine and or Alan and um, at the time I actually didn't understand all the connections with him <laughs> um, and uh, till after I came back to the States I was like oh wow that's who I interviewed <laughs> but uh, but yeah I had a great trip to Bordeaux in 2011 uh, it was it was a great time went all over the place so uh, but this is one of the premier uh, wineries in all of Bordeaux and specifically Saint Emilion so Eve um, kind of let's kind of talk about who you are how'd you get into what you do and we'll, let's get into the history of the Chateau Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for having me. It's a great pleasure to uh, be able to share a little bit more about uh, uh, Chateau Angelus and, uh, and you know, what it stands for and, uh, and a bit of its history. Maybe one thing I, I want to say before we, uh, we start is the name Angelus. Uh, yes. You might wonder where it's coming from. Uh, it has actually a long history that dates back from the 15th century. And at the time, it, was, uh, it is actually a Catholic prayer. It's a Catholic prayer that was uh, requested to be said three times a day, seven o'clock in the morning, noon, and seven o'clock in the evening. You, when you are in the Angelus Vineyards, uh, you are in a kind of natural uh, amphitheaters, mm -hmm. and you are surrounded by three uh, different villages, and each of these villages has a, has a church. And so um, each of these church were, was ringing its bell, for the Angelus, so in the morning, at noon, and at, at night. And so when you're in the vineyard, you, the, the workers could have to stop doing what they were doing mm -hmm. and to pray. Since that time, it was called the Clos de l'Angelus, and then it became Chateau Angelus. And that's also the reason why, you know, not only we have the name Angelus, but also why every label has um, a bell, on, yeah. on the, which is quite, you know, iconic uh, of, uh, of our chateau. So yeah, and I, little anecdote. when you talked about that in, so we just finished doing a class and it's a tasting and uh, I didn't know that part. Not that I know everything about the chateau, um, but I didn't catch that, that that was his name it's after a nice, it's, yeah. it's nice anecdote, it's part of our history. It's a very long history. In fact, uh, one of the characteristics also, which is very important for, for the chateau is, uh, it has actually about 250 years of history with the same family. Mm -hmm. Uh, something which is quite rare uh, nowadays in uh, in Bordeaux because a lot of the chateaux have a uh, lot of the top chateaux and the Grand Cru have been uh, acquired by uh, by large groups. Uh, it's still the same family, uh, the family de Bois de la Forêt, who has been um, you know uh, running this chateau for uh, eight generations. Mm -hmm. So today we have Stephanie de Bois uh, Rivoil, who joined uh, and took over from her father Hubert uh, de Bois in 2012. And she took over and, and uh, you know, carrying this legacy of uh, the chateau within the same family and, uh, and making them all you know, uh, bigger and bigger and, uh, and, and always searching for this, you know, quest of uh, excellence that, mm -hmm. that the chateau uh, has. Uh, not only in the, um, uh, in the vineyards, in the cellars, but also in the way we, uh, we receive uh, and we entertain, you know, our guests. Um, and actually, she's done quite, quite a lot of, you know, projects since she arrived. Uh, starting in the uh, actually acquiring some new uh, uh, vineyards, number one, mm -hmm. and second, she really uh, quickly you know took over a project of making Carillon, uh, 
which is known uh, as our second wine, as a wine, in fact, which is which has its own identity. So with separate vineyards with its own cellar that she studied to, you know, project that she studied, you know, uh, when she uh, when she joined, and with a very different blend, a blend that has actually mostly uh, Merlot, mm-hmm. uh, roughly 80, 90 percent Merlot, uh, and the rest Cabernet Franc. When Angelus is, you know. M- more or less 50-50 Cabernet Franc and Merlot. So okay. quite uh, quite interesting, a different way of uh, aging as well, and one which is quite approachable. So that was our first project. But she uh, also expanded, you know, the name Angelus into hospitality and uh, by acquiring two uh, restaurants, two mission star restaurants, mm-hmm. Le Gabriel in Bordeaux and Le Logis de la Cadenne in Saint-Emilion, which I really encourage you to, uh, uh, next time you come to Bordeaux, mm-hmm. uh, Last time was 2011. You, it's time, I think, for you to come back. Oh, it's and, definitely and, time. And, and you, you were invited <laughs> at the chateau. You also, uh, you know, you also got to be invited at the restaurant, which are actually fantastic. These two uh, Michelin style restaurants are a great uh, places, you know, in the two, uh, in, in, in both in Bordeaux and and, and the Saint Emilion. And and one more thing actually that she did also was to acquire a farm mm-hmm. that was in 2019, and the. Um, in order to uh, you know develop this you know farm to table concept, right, and and having you know uh, the product of the farm, whether it's the, the fruits, the vegetable, the poultry, the cattle, ca- cows, uh, mushroom as well uh, that we have to uh, you know uh, contribute to uh, you know the restaurants. So yeah. quite a lot has happened since uh, Stephanie joined in 2012, and um, and you mentioned it before, you know the the. The, the, the wine has, uh, you know, always been very well recognized, you know, worldwide, also mm-hmm. recognized, you know, locally. Uh, we discussed a little bit before of the appellation, uh, mm-hmm. of the classification, I'm sorry, of the appellation Saint-Emilion, which has been revised every uh, 10 years, um, starting in 1955. So Angers has pretty much experienced every different steps of this classification. In 2012, when Stephanie arrived, uh, it's also the year when actually Angelus was uh, elevated to Grand Cru Classé A, so the highest, highest possible, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, ranking. And um, in, in a way, I mean, now we kind of uh, emancipated a little bit from this classification in 2022 in order to really go even further, you know, in a, in a quest of uh, excellence and quality that we are looking for. So um, that's pretty much, you know, the picture of uh, Angelus uh, today with a very unique uh, characteristic style right. with the um, uh, DNA based you know, on on uh, with you know uh, Cabernet Franc, mm-hmm. which we feel very strongly uh, about because we feel that Cabernet Franc, uh, we have the perfect terroir for Cabernet Franc, mm-hmm. and it's also wine that really brings a lot of uh, uh, lushness, creaminess, uh, freshness, and elegance, and uh, an ability to age, which uh, which we really you know uh, um, value uh, uh, a lot, and you know in our style of wine that we're trying to produce, we always. Uh, looking for the perfect balance between the structure, the power, and also this elegance and this freshness, the tension that you have in a wine. And that's really something that, you know, right. um, Stéphanie and Hubert, you know, working together, have been looking at, you know, leaning towards, you know, making sure that our wines are uh, at this elegance and, and the tannins, you know, are there, but they're more velvety. And and, um, and and therefore, you know, you can enjoy our, our wines and Angelus specifically, you know, you know, uh, a bit uh, sooner. Uh, but they also have this ability to age for a long time, which is quite uh, quite extraordinary. Yeah. So I, I can say that the uh, the class we went through was was fantastic. Um, you know, I got to learn more about the chateau, and then we tasted a range of wines. We from number three, and then the Carillon, and then some Angelus, and uh, so. And you talked about how you have Merlot and Cabernet Franc, yeah. um, and you showed a picture of, and I'm probably showing a picture right now of the vineyards and have your plots. Mm-hmm. Um, you have different soil types. Yeah. So kind of talk about why you have the the Cabernet Franc and the Merlot planted where they're planted. Yes, I mean, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I mean, first of all, these vines are quite uh, old. The mm-hmm. average age of the vines of Angelus is about 40 years, 79 okay. exactly. So quite old uh, vines. And there's been a lot of, you know, attention uh, on the terroir and the terroir including you know, the, the soil. So what you have actually in the 
on the hills was mentioning the amphitheater on the hills you have the merlot and the soil typically is uh, clay there which is great for for the merlot very well known in a pomerol uh, mm-hmm. as you um, you probably know and so we have this uh, blue clay you know for on the on the hills perfect terroir for the merlot on the foot of the hill we do have um, mostly cabernet franc and the Cabernet Franc is on the on the soil which has uh, limestone and uh, and clay as well, and that's you know uh, also fits uh, 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 allow you know to really have the best expression of each of the grapes and and that's the characteristic of the terroir. It's a huge um, uh, asset uh, that we we have, in addition obviously to the human touch and and the team you know working mm-hmm. in the vineyard and and uh, and the, in the uh, in the cellar as well, but. Without a great terroir, without a great, you know, you cannot make a great uh, wine. That, right. that, that's, that it has to start there. Exactly. Uh, you mentioned that you know you do everything you can in the vineyard to practice as much organics as possible, mm-hmm. um, trying to be very conscious of what you're doing there. Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and uh, anything that's done in the vineyard is to try to make sure that you have healthy vines exactly. uh, and have a good harvest. Right. Yeah. I was I was mentioning you know uh, uh, great terroir, but to great terroir, at the end, what you also need to make a great wine, you need great grapes. And healthy grapes. Mm-hmm. And that's what we are uh, really looking at uh, achieving, uh, with the right concentration, the right balance, and not too much of a ripeness. And in order to, to to produce this wine that I was, you know, um, describing as, you know, being both, you know, structured but also uh, uh, elegant. Okay. So um, let's talk about some of the wines. So we started with. Uh, well, first of all, we you have. Tempo, that's where your newest wine, right? Correct. So that's coming yeah. from what part of Saint-Emilion? It's uh, coming actually not necessarily from Saint-Emilion. It's coming from a uh, vineyard that have been acquired actually by Stéphanie since okay. she uh, arrived. And a uh, vineyard which are located, you know, not that far from Saint-Emilion, but mm-hmm. in an area called Côte, Côte de Castillon and Côte de France. And so uh, great terroir also with, you know, uh, again, a mix of uh, clay and limestone and a very, uh, you know, um, a great terroir for the for the Merlot, but this wine is actually mostly Merlot uh, best in the blend, mm-hmm. uh, and and uh, it doesn't go in uh, doesn't age in wood, and that's really the entry or the access to right. the you know Angelus world. So it's an unpretentious, unpretentious wine, a wine which is very easy to uh, to enjoy that you can open without thinking too much, have with friends or family. And uh, and enjoy with charcuterie, cheese, or mm-hmm. any kind of food, and that's uh, you know and also at a price point which is quite uh, uh, you know approachable for um, most people. Right, and uh, you know one thing, it, and we keep talking about Merlot and all that. And one thing I just want to make sure people understand: Merlot is the most planted grape in all of Bordeaux. And when I have people say I don't like Merlot, and I go, "Do you like Bordeaux?" and they go, "Yes," well then you like Merlot especially if you're doing right bank. So um, Merlot, I mean, it, you, there's Merlot, a ton of Merlot on the left bank too. Um, that's not to say that you can't find it there, but, um, you know, Merlot is a fantastic grape, makes fantastic wines. And I just, you know, this is, I'm not necessarily on a, on a crusade to, to quote, mm-hmm. bring Merlot back, but I want people to understand that it was, it was unfairly um, judged God, 20 some odd years ago now from a from a movie and um i think you know people they have more knowledge of what some of the greatest wines in the world are made using merlot um maybe yeah. we need to look at that that grape again you know? yeah no this grape i mean we sort of see an important part of our blends you know mm-hmm. depending on the on the wines uh it brings a lot of fruits you know and and uh, this juiciness that we 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 like very much the sapidity uh, in a way and and uh but equally important for us is also actually uh, Cabernet Franc, which is Absolutely, also yes. something that you know is very char- characteristic of you know of uh, of Saint Emilion. So that's uh, the, the the combination of the two is for us you know uh, produces wine that we uh, really you know uh, value, and that's really what what you know Angelus has made its yeah. reputation. Uh, mm-hmm. on. So and and um, my impression from from today was that you also emphasized having a Cabernet Franc and you have a high percentage yeah. of it. Yeah. Is that something unusual with other, is it, it to having close to 50% of your vineyards being Cabernet Franc, is that kind of unusual? It's kind of unusual, yeah. Okay. There's very few, uh, it's re- also reflective from uh, our terroir, mm-hmm. uh, but yes, it's not necessarily something you find uh, uh, everywhere. And that's really the, the signature of, uh, of Angelus and that brings this, again, this freshness, this precision, the purity also, mm-hmm. And that's really what we're trying to, you know, uh, uh, what 
our wines are, are aiming to, uh, right. you know, to, to, to stand for. Yeah. And I mean, Cabernet Franc also, really, really the Bordeaux grapes in general, but Cabernet Franc is a particular favorite of mine, mm -hmm. um, whether it's on its own or M in a blend. Music to my ear. Yeah, or it was in a blend with, with on, on a Saint Emilion or a Right Bank wine. Um, you know, I, I, I really enjoy Cabernet Franc a lot. I, I mean, I like Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, I like the Bordeaux the Bordeaux varieties. I mean, there was a reason I went, the, my first trip internationally was Bordeaux. Um, I was so green. I had no idea what I was doing. Yep. I had just barely done interviews in Texas. And so this was like, a, it was a learning trip. Mm -hmm. And I, I thank everyone who sat down with me because I learned every time, you know, different things about doing interviews and like some of the challenges of, of doing this stuff. But, um, you know, there was a reason I went to Bordeaux first. Um, it is of the French regions. I, it is my favorite. Um, nothing, nothing against Burgundy. I had a great time in Burgundy. Fantastic. Went to Alsace. Uh, went to Chablis. Beaujolais. I right, Beaujolais. I do like Beaujolais. But, um, but I mean, Bordeaux is tends to be my favorite, my go-to if I'm thinking French wine. Um, that that's that's what I just really enjoy. Well, it's great. It's, it's, it's great to hear. Uh, I think you, 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 I like Right Bank a lot. Too. You, you, you're due to a, a new uh, a new visit, and yeah. so uh, hopefully we can. You know, we would love to uh, to welcome you. But yeah. it's true that Bordeaux in uh, in the world, obviously, it has always been traditionally, you know, uh, one of the main regions. You know, recognized in France, um, not the only one. Obviously, there are a lot of great wines mm -hmm. in many different regions. But it's uh, yes, it has a certain style more specifically on certain vintages that you can't find anywhere. And, and that's really what yeah. makes it unique and, and special. And, uh, and you have actually uh, um, a diversity of wine mm -hmm. uh, and style in Bordeaux, which is actually quite, uh, quite interesting. Uh, in the red, but also sometimes, you know, in the, in the white wine as well. Absolutely, you know, yes. It's uh, dry or, or, or sweet. So it's a region, obviously, that has a lot to, uh, to offer. That's been like uh, everything, you know, has some uh, competition. Let's call it this way. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, uh, there's nothing better than uh, sharing a great bottle, you know, with uh, friends and family and create memories. And then that, yeah. you know, uh, also what, you know, uh, bottle uh, is another region that can help yeah. you to do, to do that. I mean, I got to experience the sweet stuff. I actually went, went to Barsak and Sauternes. <laughs> and uh, another person who, whose family is very influential, um, Olivier Kassaja with uh, uh, Joyce of Your Dream, Another person, I, I just, I, I had no idea who his family was until I came back to the States. And I was like, wow, this is a pretty important family. Um, and he was the nicest person. Every, everybody, um, everybody was super nice in, in Bordeaux. And I mean, Lee emphasized that I had a great time there. And it may seem imposing because you have these chateaus and these, so a lot, not everything is a big, big house, but sometimes they're imposing chateau. Beautiful but property, the people, yeah. Yeah. the people treated me very well. And I had a great time there. Um, so, so we did, so we did. I know, I think it's important uh, yeah. to rebound themselves. I echo what you're saying. You know, I think it's true that you have beautiful chateaus, beautiful properties. But something that also the Dubois family has always been, uh, you know, one thing that they always, you know, uh, paid attention was to make sure that, you know, they receive you uh, like they would receive, you know, uh, families and friends, mm -hmm. not in an ostentatious way, uh, making you feel comfortable. And, you know, it's one is about conviviality, about sharing, about, you know, uh, sharing memories yes. and, and, and creating memories. And that's really what's the, the most important. And right. it's true that we're lucky to be in a, in a beautiful environment. But, you know, at the end of the day, we need to experience, right. you know. Um, exactly. Hence probably why, you know, Stephanie wants to get into that hospitality side of exactly. things, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's Extend a very that. complimentary, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have the, you know, the hour of making great wine, but also, uh, you know, with the great food and the hospitality, you know, the art of uh, living, the art of right. receiving, hosting. And that everything you know, uh, you know, comes uh, together obviously. And you have a hotel too, right? With absolutely. restaurant, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Le, le Logis de la Calaine, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful hotel, uh, uh, a few rooms, and and quite nice. And with the restaurant which is downstairs, which is quite uh, you know yeah. uh, convenient. Awesome. So what we tasted was number three, and that was the. 20, 20 vintage, 20 yeah. vintage. Mm -hmm. um, and then we tasted two vintages of the Carillon, so 18 and 19. 18 and 19, yeah. Okay. And then we tasted three uh, vintages of Angelus. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was the uh, no, the 20, the 19, and the 14. And 14. Or no, was it 18? 
There was 18. 18. No, 18. 20, 18, or 21. 20, 20, uh, 21, 18, 18 and, 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 14. And, and 14, exactly. Okay. So um, let's kind of talk about, you, you talked about there's some challenges with a couple of the vintages. So um, there was, I think, something with 21 that was a particular challenge. 21 was a challenging in a way that, uh, you know, the every 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 year we, we, we give a name to, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, to the vintage. So we call uh, the 21 vintage the unexpected um it's been challenging uh, with frost uh, uh, first in the spring and with a lot of rain also in the summer and the, uh, and, and the summer really took some time to, to come. Um, and so it's really when the conditions are, are difficult, that's really when you need to uh, have the team uh, making sure that, you know, you um, do what has to be done in order to mitigate some of the tough conditions, you know, when it rains. We're lucky when it rains because the topography I was mentioning before you know, helps a lot mm -hmm. in the sense that the the, the rain, actually 80% of the rain kind of, you know, drains and doesn't really necessarily penetrate as much, you know, in the, in the soil. So that, that's a big plus that we have. But still, the team has to be, you know, always very vigilant to um, do what has to be done, you know, in terms of the leafing or, you know, everything that has to be done with the vine during mm -hmm. those conditions. We were lucky in a, in a way that in September, the conditions were actually turned out to be quite uh, nice and allowed the, 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 the grapes to uh, ripen uh, properly and and uh, and producing a, a vintage which is actually quite uh, interesting. Um, a vintage that has not necessarily been so far, I think, let's say well recognized by a lot of, you know, um, professional or wine critics, but I think it's changing because I think uh, we're realizing that they, it produced some very, uh, you know, interesting wine, very, uh, again, with the perfect, you know, balance, elegance, and and uh, wine that also going to have this ability to, to age. So yeah. um, it's still young, but actually already enjoyable because the tannins are pretty well integrated mm -hmm. already, uh, but if you give it a, a few more years, and there's going to be a, a wine that's going to give a lot of pleasure, you know, to, to whoever is uh, opening this bottle. Yeah. I would say that when I had, so first of all, all the wines were fantastic, obviously. Uh, well, I mean, obviously to me, I guess, but I mm. mean, but it, they were fantastic. Um, but yeah, I remember with the 21, we got to the 21 Angelus. Um, first of all, you can see the difference in, 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 in wines. Yep. So it was definitely, we were going, stepping up into the quality and all that. But when we got to the 21, yes, not that the, the other ones had elegance, but there there was that difference. There was, a, I felt like an, an additional elegance and smoothness and silkiness with that wine. Um, so yeah, maybe it was a challenging vintage, but um, you mentioned that I've, I've had many winemakers, when things are challenging, that's when the, that's when the good winemakers really show that they have that talent. Anyone can make a wine, anyone who's, who knows how to make wine, anyone can make a wine in an easier vintage, right? Very true. Uh, maybe not me, but, no, but, but, I've, but I've seen that in other parts of the world. It, it's true. You know, in a, in a great year, you, you know, it's much easier to make a great wine. Yeah. So you need to have the, the, the great terroir. But in this year, which is a bit more challenging, you know, uh, sometimes, you, uh, that's where, you know, the, in addition to the terroir, that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I was mentioning the edge of the vines, you know, uh, and the root system, which is actually quite deep, you know, in addition to the topography and all the, the terroir, generally speaking, you know, uh, is a asset that helps a lot to start. But also, yes, the, the, the human touch uh, is quite uh, crucial. Uh, I was mentioning to you that after 2014, mm -hmm. uh, Hubert de Bois was uh, celebrating his 40th vintage that he did uh, at Angelus. So this year is going to be his 40th uh, uh, vintage. In 14 was 30th. Yes. Okay. And and so uh, obviously this uh, all this experience that has been acquired you know, over the years uh, really you know gave him like a lot of uh, you know uh, skills and knowledge to mitigate some of the impact of the the, the, the climatic conditions. Mm -hmm. So uh, although it's a constant quest, as I was mentioning to you earlier, it's a constant quest for excellence and there's nothing, you know, um, although Hubert has been making these wines for 40 years, um, there's constantly some some little, you know, uh, evolutions, what Stephanie likes to call the, the pixel, the pixelization, where you bring some little nuances to lean towards, you know, uh, a style of wine that, you know, uh, we, we, we stand for. So yeah. it's uh, always... Uh, 
It was interesting. So, like, for 14, I think you mentioned something about because of his experience and, and, and the everyone there, he held on to vent to, to, to for harvest, right? Because exactly. it was, yeah, like kind of a wet September. Exactly. It took a uh, summer, it took a lot of time to come. And in, uh, uh -huh. so the, the 14 is actually called the, uh, I was mentioning the nickname, it's called the Indian. Indian because we had a beautiful Indian summer. But yes, yeah, there was, um, the, we, we waited at the chateau for, the, for harvesting until the beginning of October. So, Really let uh, let harvest, which is always a bit of a risk, mm -hmm. uh, but that allowed you know to have uh, the the grapes you know with the right uh, ripeness, right concentration, allowing the, the the right extraction you know after doing the vinification, and uh, it turned out to be we tested the wine uh, a bit earlier. The wine is now uh, after ten years, absolutely uh, beautiful. It's expressive. It's really something you know that uh, it's a wine that that I think now is uh, is uh, singing you know in a glass and mm -hmm. and. Uh, with the, both the structure and this uh, very uh, a strong aromatic, you know, expression, but at the same time, you know, some uh, uh, some uh, density, some elegance, some tension, and that's really uh, uh, quite, you know, quite uh, uh, an achievement uh, based on a vintage that was, you know, kind of challenging again uh, mm -hmm. for, yeah. for a long time. Exactly, and I find that. I've, when I've had vintages that were challenging vintages, um, and I've had them a few years later, I feel like because they were a challenge, they are, they tend to, I don't know, maybe they age better. They, they show, I think, better than expected. Um, Quite often the case. I'll, yeah. I'll refer to 2011 Napa. Yeah. Um, that everybody was just said it was going to be a horrible vintage. And when they described the vintage, I was like, but that's kind of like old world you know, basically a Bordeaux mm -hmm. style vintage, mm -hmm. not quite, but because of the challenges they had and because California is just so used to things just going almost perfectly every year, mm -hmm. um, they had those challenges. And I will say that I've had 11s, I haven't had 11 recently, but I had 11s at 10 years, you know, back, you know, back in 21. And I thought they were fantastic. This 14. I agree. You, you, I agree. Uh, by the way, yeah. I agree with you. The 11 <laughs> right now is showing beautifully. It was not very well regarded at the time after the 2009 and 2010, uh, and right now it's an absolutely exceptional wine to 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 serve. I think it has the structure and the and the ageability yeah. better than say like some of the other vintages that came before or after that um, it was easier to make mm -hmm. because of because of the weather. Mm -hmm. um, but the 14, you kept mentioning freshness, and it has freshness, and we're ta we're talking. Ten, well, nine and a half ish years. I mean, we're you know we're gonna split hairs since vintage, since harvest. But a ten year old wine that still tastes fresh, right? And yes, you have some secondary and tertiary in there because you should, but it still has that has a freshness to it. The fruit is still lively. And you talked about having something from '90s yesterday. Oh. It also was fresh. We're well, lucky to have uh, one of our clients yeah. who are generous enough to, to open some '95. '95, yeah. '95 still actually has this, you know. I mean, it's obviously amazing complexity, and uh, but it's always this touch of freshness that allows the wine to continue to, to yeah. age and to be enjoyed, you know, and uh, for quite uh, quite a long time. So yeah. that's really the. The, the beauty, I think, of uh, Cabernet Franc and uh, and uh, that brings that, uh, that ability, you know, to exactly, yeah, to 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 have uh, wine with this kind of elegance, right? Um, and let's kind of we kind of skipped over the eighteen. I, I like because you, you gave it a name, and I like the name. So let's kind of talk about the eighteen and why it's called what it's called. The Phoenix. Yes, it's called the Phoenix. So yeah, every year as a, as a, as a, as a, it's called uh, like that because obviously it's uh, like the phoenix, you know, that rebirths from its uh, its ashes. That's a little bit the story also of the the, the 18, which uh, you know after again some of the uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, heat uh, and and uh, during the summer was able to uh, rejuvenate in in September, you know, with the right uh, conditions, uh, with some rain when we need to have rain. And that's why we give it the, the name of the Phoenix with the uh, little Phoenix on the on, on the bottle. Yeah, it's a little little soldier yes. of the bottle. Yeah. So I mean, while harvest time rain maybe not be the best thing in that particular vintage, the rain came at just the right time just the to right kind time. of revive exactly you know, yeah. and bring back vitality, you know, in the mm -hmm. vineyards and um, and uh, it was a bit the same actually in the sixteen. You know, sixteen we had yeah. three months with no uh, water pretty much. And then September arrived. We had some uh, storms and rains, and that's again that brought back the vitality yeah. in the in the vineyard and allowed the grapes to you know uh, have the right 
juiciness, the Cabernet Franc to be like a crunchy and, and producing, producing wine, which would be yeah. like a, a wine that you want to have in your cellar for sure. I'm going to try to remember the Cabernet Franc and crunchy thing because it, it's such a great descriptor for having something with Cabernet Franc. And I'm going to try to remember that if I have anything, if I can feel that. But um, the wines were amazing. Um, presentation was fantastic. Um, yes, at some point I will get back to Bordeaux. And um, you are definitely on the list near the top to, to come visit. Um, we're going a little longer than I kind of expected. Well, I, it's kind of hard to, to compress everything you just did in, in 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> 250 years in, uh, in 15 minutes. Yeah, it takes a while. So we're about a half an hour. Um, and I know you probably have things you need to do. Is there anything that we didn't cover that you want to talk about? No, I think it's uh, it's uh, ultimately, you know, it's it's really uh, our wines are meant to be uh, enjoyed, are meant to be shared, mm -hmm. are meant to be open. And uh, and uh, and I'm glad we had the, 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 the opportunity to do it today and share these bottles and create the memories. Uh, connect with it uh, with one on, one another, and yeah. and uh, and that's what you know the life should be about. You know, I know that Houston had some tough condition right now. Yes, so, it did. Yeah. Um, you know, really feel for all the Houstonian, and and uh, you also need some time where you, you know, enjoy the moment and 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 share. A simple, you know, pleasure in life, and and wine is part of that. So Absolutely. Thanks for, yeah. Thanks very much for having me, and uh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. I, I'll just say this is the third of my three interviews the being in Houston the last three days, and yeah, the the subject of so. If you aren't familiar, especially depending on when this actually comes out, a uh, very big storm came from Houston. Um, you know, the what was this the second the second week of May, and. Um, knocked out power to a lot of people, like a million people without power. There were some, unfortunately, some some casualties. Uh, not a lot, but still, you know, any any casualties are, are unfortunate. Uh, actually, the hotel I stayed at, the um, a lot of the trucks that are still cleaning up, and we're talking, we're almost a week since the storm. They were staging in at the stadium, and I was literally staying across the street from from that. So, I mean, there's still things happening that people, I think maybe. Yesterday, finding some people who were out without power finally got some power. So, um, these each of these events, you know, we this this was the subject was touched upon, and the people in Houston having to go through what they were doing, but yet still resilient, uh, still doing their day to day thing, and ha being able to enjoy some wine uh, to bring a little joy um, for anyone that might have had some struggles through through the last few days here uh, was great. I luckily didn't have to go through that. Uh, matter of fact, I was like, "What happened?" You know, I look at the news and I'm like, mm -hmm. "What?" I didn't even realize. I, I, I think I felt like everyone kind of got caught off guard. It was not expected. It looks, it looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Pretty um, terrible. Yeah. I just want to thank everybody for, for the past three days and the hospitality I've received. Um, the, this industry uh, is great in hospitality, whether you're making the wine or serving the wine or selling the wine. Um, you know, it, it, we're all about here for hospitality at the end of the day. Uh, Yves, I appreciate you sitting down with me. Uh, this was a fantastic experience. Um, and I will absolutely reach out if I, if I please, make it back to Bordeaux. Do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All Mark. right. Have a good one. All right, folks, just going to wrap it up. As, as always, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Uh, tell your friends about it, and we'll see everyone next time.